What is up guys, Andrew with No Excuses TV here and today the video that you we have for you is a fly tying video but it's not one that I've actually tied. Oh, I've tied the fly but this is not me tying it. So when I first got into fly tying I bought the Scientific Anglers like beginner fly tying kit, right? And so the thing that they sent, they had all the materials with it, they also sent a DVD of the, the instructions how to tie the fly. So the problem is is I didn't have a DVD player whenever I got this. And so I had a big time, a big struggle trying to figure out how to <clears throat> learn the techniques. And so I emailed, they told us that there's plenty of stuff on YouTube uh, to figure out how to tie those ties, the, the, the flies that they were in that video. The problem was, was I couldn't find one that lined up exactly with the materials that they had provided. So it would have required me to buy more materials or use other stuff, excuse me, and I didn't want to do any of that. So. What I did is I went through and broke all of the videos down for their specific flies, and that's what you have here. And so this is a specifically for the fly, Scientific Angler's a Beginner Fly Tying Kit. It's the video that goes with it in case you don't have a DVD player. Here you go. Again, I'm not going to monetize any of this because it's not my material, but I wanted a place online that I could reference this in re, at a resource instead of having to... To rely on having a DVD player, which as as we continue to move forward is going to be less and less common. Um, and so if you need one, here you go. So anyway, hope you liked the video. They do a great job tying this fly. This fly. Uh, make sure you like this video. Uh, if you want other content that's not specifically fly tying, but just fly fishing, outdoor, hiking, camping, rock climbing related, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the note or ding that, click the notification bell so you never miss the next video. Welcome to Introduction to Fly Tying. My name is Greg Vinci, and I'll be your instructor who will take you on a journey that will provide you skills and knowledge that will greatly enhance your fly fishing experience. Though this video will provide you with all of the basic skills, there is not enough time in this video to go over the fine points of tying flies. I strongly recommend that you get some personal instruction whenever possible. Instruction can be found at fly fishing shows, fly club meetings, and at your local fly shop. Now we're going to learn the parts of the fly. They are the tail, the abdomen, the thorax, and the legs. The tools that we'll be using are the bobbin, bobbin threader, hackle plier, half hitch tool, scissors, and hair stacker. The thread spool is attached by snapping it in between the arms of the bobbin. We then take the bobbin threader and insert it into the tip of the bobbin so that it protrudes from the base. Then we take the end of the thread and insert it into the protruding wire loop of the bobbin threader. Finally, pull the loop up through the tube and out of the tip. In order to even the hairs of the clump of elk hair we use for hair wing flies, such as the elk hair caddis we will tie later in the video, we use a device called the hair stacker. We begin by cutting a clump of elk hair or deer hair that we are using to tie our hair wing fly. It is important to brush the hair to remove the underfur so that the hair packs evenly in the hair stacker. Now place the tips of the hair into the flared top of the hair stacker and push down. To remove the packed hair, we slowly rock the flared tube of the hair stacker while gradually removing it from its base. 
It helps if you hold the hair stacker with the base slightly elevated. The hackle plier are used to facilitate handling of delicate materials such as hackle when being wound onto the fly. Squeeze the pliers between your thumb and forefinger and clip the jaws onto the tip of the hackle and then gently wrap the hackle around the shank of the hook. Be careful not to put pressure on the hackle as it will easily break. The parachute is one of the most realistic of the dry flies. When viewed by the fish from below the surface, its silhouette very much resembles that of a newly emerged adult mayfly sitting in the surface film waiting for its wings to dry so that it can fly away and mate. Tied in different colors and sizes, it can mimic any mayfly species from giant-sized hexagenias down to tiny blue wing olives. Materials and tools for tying a parachute are as follows. Dubbing, polypro yarn, that can be used for tying the post, or you can use uh, calf tail if that's what came with your kit. Hook, grizzly hackle, bobbin with thread, scissors, half hitch tool, and hackle plier. After wrapping the thread to the bend of the hook, we will tie in the tail. We are going to tie this parachute Adam style, so we'll use a combination of grizzly and brown hackle barbs for the tail. Now wrap the thread forward away from the bend, stopping one third of the way back from the eye. Here is where we'll tie in the post. To the fish looking at the fly from below, the post gives the impression of the mayfly's wing. Several different materials can be used for the post, such as calf tail or polypropylene, but in this video we're using polypropylene. Cut off a short length and make several tight wraps to secure it, and then pull the post into a vertical position and make several wraps in front of the post building up the thread so that the post stands on its own. Now make several horizontal wraps around the post so as to create some rigidity. Wrap the thread back to the bend of the hook and we will begin dubbing the abdomen just as we did for the atoms earlier in this video. Rather than create an exaggerated tapered body as we did on the atoms, here we'll just create a gradual taper. Don't forget to apply the dubbing sparsely to the thread.
we'll now tie in our hackle. Take a feather of the grizzly hackle and strip away the barbs at the stem. Now it's important to remember that the curved or shiny side of the hackle should be tied so that it faces up. After tying in the hackle, wrap the hackle slowly around the base of the parachute post, trying to keep it as tight as possible. Sometimes you may have to hold the post so it doesn't bend while you wrap the hackle. Once finished, then you can take a couple wraps of thread, being careful not to pinch the barbs behind the eye of the hook, to secure the hackle. Pull back the hackle and make several wraps of thread between the post and the eye. And then trim off any hackle barbules that get in the way of the eye of the hook. Now use the half hitch tool to finish it off. Finally, apply a drop of head cement to the wraps behind the eye and to the base of the parachute post so as to glue in the hackle wraps. Trim the parachute post to the desired length, which is usually equal to the distance between the eye of the hook and the bend. You have now completed tying the most difficult of flies, a parachute. There you have it. You now have all the skills necessary to embark on a lifetime of tying flies. When you're on the stream, remember to pinch your barbs, release your fish, and keep our waterways clean.